Okay, everyone, it's good to hear the hubbub of networking going on. Look forward to that continuing as the night continues. And uh, welcome to the Huron Manufacturing Association Awards 2013. And um, I always enjoy coming uh, to this event. Um, I happen to be here tonight because Alice Munro won the Nobel Prize for Literature. And uh, yes, that is why I, that is the reason why I'm here tonight. See, Alice has a, some would call him a caretaker. I call him a boy toy of Alice Munro's. And, and uh, some might know who that is. Alice has taken him to BC and from there, he will be accepting the award on her behalf in Stockholm, Sweden. His name is Rob Bundy. And Rob Bundy was supposed to MC tonight, and this is how I got the gig. And uh, Rob said to Carol Leeming, who's coordinating this uh, great event tonight, and I quote, I find myself on a mission of, uh, of uh, national importance. So that's where Rob Bundy is. Uh, going to be very, very soon, and that's why he couldn't be with us tonight. So I, I have the privilege of being with you again. I was able to do it last year, but last year it was a pretty easy gig. Monica Walker Bolton basically took over for me, bumped me off the stage, and took care of things. So <laughs> Carol is going to make sure I'm going to work tonight. I've already had two meetings with her about tonight. So we encourage you to tweet. If you're a twit at all, please tweet. Um, HMA. 2013, that's HMA um, 2013, that's our hashtag. So feel free to do that. We also would like you to take your pictures. We have Sarah Caldwell here. She's going to be taking some pictures for us. And um, if you feel so inclined, grab a bubble sign. And uh, we'd be, uh, we're going to have those over there by the beautiful ice sculpture, and Sarah will take care of you there. Also wanted to mention that donations will be received for the uh, Huron County Food Bank Distribution Center, and we're privileged to have them here tonight. They're just on the way to the bar, so it's a perfect, perfect way. What perfect thing to do is make a donation, either a canned good if you have one in your pocket, or a cash donation is excellent. On your table are local food items. They're from all over Huron County. It's a very impressive list. And you can read and you can find out where these things are made and just ask yourself some questions. Do you know where the manufacturers are located? Do you know what uh, different items they make? Have you tasted what they make? And you will be able to take all but one of those items home. You're going to have to fight over it. Frank Palin has, uh, has told me that all the meat sticks stay on the table and uh, he'll be collecting those at the end of the night. I don't know where our... Um, our county would be without uh, this next organization coming up. Uh, our gold sponsor for the HMA Awards of Excellence, it's the United Communities Credit Union. I'd like to welcome Carl Bolton to the stage, member uh, of our board of directors uh, and uh, at the Uni United Communities Credit Union. And uh, he's gonna be uh, saying a couple words for us. So please welcome Carl Bolton. Welcome everyone. It's a uh, it's a great night, <clears throat> and uh, I'm always in awe of of uh, all the talent and innovation that's here in Huron County. The first time I went to one of these meetings, I I've lived here all my life, and I couldn't believe how much talent is here. It's just amazing, and I think you should give yourselves a round of a hand, round of applause for that. <clears throat> We'd. Uh, We'd like to thank the uh, here in manufacturers for uh, hosting this event, and we're very pleased to be part of it. Um, at United Communities, our main goal is uh, to our, for our members to achieve financial success while giving back to the communities we serve. We currently are one of La Ontario's largest credit unions with 1.3 billion in funds under administration, 11 branches, and 200 employees. We are locally owned and operated Decisions are made locally, and profits are invested back into the communities. As many, many of you know, 
Our membership recently voted to merge with Libro Financial Group, making the new Libro Credit Union. It'll be the second largest credit union in Ontario and the 10th largest in Canada. And we will begin January 1st. <clears throat> the merger enables the credit union to grow both in size and geography with a total of 28 branches, all in small communities just like we are now. There will be no branch closures. We will continue to be represented local with people just as myself. I farm uh, just outside of Winthrop and that's all your decisions are made locally. And we think that's, we want to be a big part of local communities and that's a big part of who we are. Um, the, we'll be still small enough to know you through local representation, representation like this and big enough to serve you. There's so much innovation coming down the pipe in the financial sector to help you do your business faster and better. And we'd like to be part of that with you. Size brings economies to scale and uh, this is one of the things we hope to be the best, cre uh, the best financial institution in southwestern Ontario where the profits are given back to our members and local communities. We're excited to forge this smart invitation uh, innovative partnership and help stimulate the economy. We've grown significantly over the last 70 years making sure we listen to the needs of our local communities finding unique solutions to assist our members in meeting their financial goals. This merger allows us forward thinking, meet the changing needs of our members and communities. We value the relationships that we've built with many of you here today. And we want to, I want to assure you that we will continue to do that and look forward to working with all of, our, all of you in our local economy. I encourage you to visit our Better to Best .ca website to learn more about the merger and the positive impact we'll have on our region. Again, I'd like to thank you for, uh, for this great evening and best of luck to all the nominees and enjoy your evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Carl, and congratulations. It's going to be a good merger, so we look forward to good things. We also want to mention our silver sponsors tonight, and you'll see those scrolling. Oh, my goodness. Well, I should have shaved today. Sorry about that. I just saw myself. Uh, silver sponsors, County of Huron, Huron Business Development Corporation, Municipality of Huron East, Municipality of Morris Turnberry, Township of Ashfield, Colburn, Wawanosh, Town of Godrich, Municipality of Blue Water, and Huron Small Business Enterprise Center. And so we want to want to thank those silver sponsors tonight. And Let's go into uh, just some, a few words from, uh, for, uh, from some uh, very influential people here. Well, let's start with uh, our MP, Ben Lobb, wherever Ben is. I tried to interest him in a, in a pretzel. He didn't want it, so I took it. I've had at least three now, and I th thank you very much, Mr. Ben Lobb. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, congratulations again on another year. Uh, I won't go into great lengths tonight because I know uh, probably between you and supper. Um, but again, thank you for everything you do in our communities. Uh, it's tremendous, the jobs that you create, um, the economic uh, stimulus that you created through our communities. <clears throat> I recently did a speech in Ottawa on the implementation of the budget and what's a phenomenon in our area, in a rural area, is to have an employment, unemployment rate as low as what we have. Uh, it's 5.5% in Huron County and 4.5% in Bruce County. And it's, it's almost a phenomenon in, in, in Ontario, in rural communities, to have an unemployment rate that low. And there's only one reason. It's because there's people like you that know how to create the jobs, that know how to innovate and employ people. It's not because guys like me, I guarantee you that. So, uh, that's what I'm here to say is to say thank you keep doing what you're doing our jobs to get out of your way and uh, Your jobs just to keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, and I hope uh, 2014 is another great year. Thank you Boy he's tall. Thank you Ben Our MPP Lisa Thompson I understand she is in the building and here she comes
I like this. <laughs> I think somebody's going to have their pictures taken with this later, right? Uh, I recognize this. We had uh, the youngest in our family just graduated from Brock University this spring, and there was all kinds of little bubbles that you could use. And uh, her dad used one that said, she's finally graduated. <laughs> you know, woohoo. So this is cute, and use it proudly tonight. And I say that because driving here, I was reflecting on what makes Huron County so unique. And uh, one could joke around that it's a neighbor to Bruce County, which uh, I say very proudly as well. But in all seriousness, it's the innovation and it's the commitment that we have in this particular county. I don't know whether you heard about it today or not, but Heinz down in Lincoln made an announcement today. They're closing their doors. 800 jobs and a lot of negative ripple effect. And so that's why celebrating what we do as small business, as innovators, as manufacturers, is so, so important. And tonight, it's about celebrating, and tomorrow I look forward to hearing about innovations. I was going around the trade show, and there's some amazing things going on. And so it's gonna be our job, my job and Ben's job, to make sure that you have the proper support mechanisms in place, and that you work closely with the Huron County Development Foundation and uh, there's a lot of directors here. It's great that you have the support of Libro and my United Communities. That's the type of support that's going to make our area, our region go forward. And uh, as I was saying at an announcement last night where Godrich welcomed four new doctors to their community, we have to ensure that what doesn't happen in rural Ontario doesn't become a dream and it doesn't turn to dust. We have to make sure we have the right systems in place and the right people in place that don't take no for an answer and so that we can continue to grow. Ben, you're spot on spouting uh, really important numbers. We have really low unemployment rates and it's because of all of you and what you do as small business and we celebrate that. And uh, I just close on the note that I've been given the extra um, or additional responsibilities of small critic for small business and red tape. And I look forward to working with you to help identify what is it that is making you excel in Huron County and what can we be doing differently so that we can continue to grow forward. Thank you very much. Enjoy the evening and congratulations to all the nominees. Okay, thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you for that information. To all my external family, it's all, all have had jobs basically at the Heinz plant in Leamington. They all come from Leamington. And, uh, and we happened to move here up in 70 when my dad wanted to start a mink ranch, but then he got a, he got a job at the salt mine. So that, that's gonna hit home for, for my family as well too. On Halloween, just sorry, I'm just gonna interrupt. Uh, on Halloween, I, for some reason, I scared myself and watched Death by China. I don't know if anybody's ever seen that documentary. But I was amazed by the fact that 25 million Americans are looking for work. Only 9% of the workforce is in manufacturing. And yet, yesterday, I watched all these great videos that Carol Leeming sh showed me about what we're doing here in Huron. And I am amazed that we are here and that we're celebrating each other and that we're encouraging one another. It's amazing the, the innovation that's happening here. And we are here doing that. So again, it is a privilege. Um, it is indeed a privilege to be here. Um, can I call to the stage Warden George Robertson, please? There he is. I thought Ray didn't look very distinguished. That was, there he is. There he is, good. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests. I am honored to be here tonight to bring greetings from County of Council and staff. The County of Huron is committed to great business climate that supports traditional enterprises while encouraging new endeavors. I am pleased to pay tribute to all the nominees for 2013 Manufacturing Excellence Awards. Our community and economy is stronger because of your vision, your courage, and enthusiasm. An Irish writer, Frederick Langbridge, once said, and I quote, two men looked out through the same bars. One sees the mud, and one sees the stars. 
I congratulate all the nominees for you, See the Saw the Stars. Thank you. Okay, next up, Huron East, Deputy Mayor Joe Steffler. Ooh, that light's bright. Anyway, uh, on behalf of Mayor Bernie, council and staff at Huron East, uh, especially the great ward of Seaforth, I would like to welcome everybody here. You know, I'm going to be the first one that comes clean here, and there's a lot of you out there that are as guilty as I am. How many have been on that website for HMA? Today I went on for the first time, and I should be ashamed of myself. But I see the HMA have made a few changes, and there was two changes that I really noticed. It was the looks of John Grace and Luke Jamat. That was taken in 1998, 15 years ago. They have grown a bit, they have changed their hair color, they have done a lot of things. As HMA have done a lot of things in 15 years, can you imagine what they were 15 years ago and what they are today? And that's because HMA look ahead. If you look back, that's where you've been. You're not gonna change that. If you go to Toronto today, you can't change it tomorrow. So we might as well look ahead and do what HMA have done. And Lisa was saying, why are we so good here in Huron East, Huron County, Bruce County? We don't take failure easy. There's no sense of being chairman of the pity club. Get off your butt and do something about it. That's what HMA have done. So what I would like to do is congratulate, pre-congratulate the winners tonight and congratulate all the nominees because in Huron, Bruce, any part of rural Ontario, there's no such thing as a loser. We're all winners. Thank you. That's the Joe I've heard about. <laughs> HMA Chairman Frank Palin. I don't know if he's, are you getting meat sticks? Where's Frank? He's, Frank's gonna come up, here he come. Oh. Oh, negotiating, yeah, Frank's negotiating, okay. Very good, Frank's gonna take it uh, for, from here for just a couple minutes, and then we'll talk about what we are going to eat. It's always good with Cardiff's. Here we go. First of all, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Uh, I want to congratulate all the winners, all the nominees. Uh, I'm going to do it now before I'll forget later. Uh, I, my memory is not very good. I'll tell you that right now. Um, I think one of the things that <clears throat> that that I like to uh, I like to say is one of the benefits of of my position uh, for the last couple of years has been learning about all the people, all the businesses, all the manufacturers that are actually in Huron County. What they do, how they do it, where they do it, and what they do it with. Uh, it's, it's very interesting, and I'm a, like everybody else that says, I, I'm really pleased that I could meet a lot of you. So um, I think one thing, though, I would like to do is mention our uh, board of directors. Without them, nothing would get done, okay? Of course, we have Carol Leeming, who is our coordinator. Uh, without her, nothing would get done. Uh, but we also have uh, Andrew Moss from uh, Sun North. Can he please stand up and, oh, are you both over there? Okay. Um, Jeff Hearn, is Jeff here tonight? Oh, there he is. He's our vice president. Um, do, 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 John Kaiser with the credit union. There he is. Ray Grenadanis from the board. Uh, and Stephen Oud from Vanastra Packaging. I think he's back there too. 
Now, I have to apologize. I can't see out there, but I can't read with my glasses on. So I think that is pretty well all that I have to say. I don't think there's anything else at this time. Um, I want to thank, again, uh, everybody for coming. But I think uh, Carol's going to, is it Carol going to do some thank yous? Are you, Carol? See, I want to get off the stage, so I'll let somebody else do it. I'm used to Monica doing it all. Share, share the joy. Share yes. the joy. That's what it's, what it's all about. Just before, it's, it's me between you and supper. But before we do that, I would like to, uh, again, just wel uh, welcome uh, everyone here this evening and say, this has been so much fun planning this day. And uh, I'm, I'm already now for when my kids get married. So um, <laughs> bring it on. Bring it on. Uh, and that's not going to be for a, f a few years yet, though. So, uh, But at this time, I would like to just briefly uh, say some words about um, the awards committee, the selection committee, and the nomination committee, because truly without their roles, uh, this, this night wouldn't happen as well, in addition to all the nominees as well. So behind the scenes, what happened to, uh, to, to prepare for tonight, we had a nomination committee that got together and uh, uh, nominated some companies and and brought forward some nominations to the selection committee who uh, selected from from those nominees the winners for this evening and which was a very tough job I can tell you that just what watching them uh, go through the uh, the uh, discussion process for each category and there's also the awards organizing committee and I do have uh, some some items to to give uh, and just to show my appreciation and if I could have Jan Hawley and Allison Lobb come come to the stage and I have, uh, they were involved with my nomination committee, so I, I could have them come forward. Yeah. Oh. So on, on behalf of the Hearing Manufacturing Association, I'd like to recognize my nomination committee. And I've got for them this evening uh, Faces of Farming 2014 calendar, which features real farmers from across Ontario each month, of the, each month of the year. And I would like to highlight for them that March is actually Huron County Farmers. So um, uh, Cheryl Garnis and her two daughters are featured for March. So thank you very much. And if I could have my selection committee come forward, um, Jeff Hearn, John Kaiser, Andrew, Ma, and Andrew Moss, and, Je and Jim Neeson. Oh, no. And uh, this crew here was, was the selection committee that uh, uh, selected the award winners uh, for this evening and they did a, a terrific job and much pondering happened around the table and I have uh, selected for them on behalf of the Hearing Manufacturing Association a Hearing Manufactured gift. I wish I could have one of these myself but I'm for myself but I'm sharing it's actually chocolate from Sugar and Spice <laughs> Chocolate in Exeter so thank you very much. just been told I could share some of their chocolate with them so that's that's awesome uh, and in the awards organizing committee um, of, of which helped plan for this evening was uh, composed of Andrew again a busy guy uh, Jan Hawley and Nina Reynolds and I have a, um, a calendar also that's, that's, that's Nina. you say Nina I say Nina <laughs> is Nina um, Nina can you come forward and uh, Jan and Andrew again. So I, uh, these, this is my wonderful awards organizing committee and I, I've got for them uh, a calendar of Faces of Farming as well. Again, uh, featuring farmers from across uh, Ontario. So thank you crew, very well done. Thank you. Thank you.
There we go. Never know what I'm going to be doing. I was holding skewers and delivering calendars. I wanted to mention that we're going to, through, uh, through supper tonight, we're going to have some harpists, and they are Hannah and Maggie Bergsma from Sh- Sharon Johnston's Harp School. So they're going to be, I believe they're going to be up here, is that right? And they're going to be uh, harping our way through, through supper. Um, I just want to mention, uh, just, to, just to get you ready, uh, a menu, juice, apple cider from Blake's Apple Orchard, tomato, cran, raspberry, Caesar salad with Huron County bacon bits is, is heading your way. It's going to be in your mouth very soon. Breads, a selection of European-style breads from Poganat's Bakery. I believe that's, where's that Poganat's Bakery? I know it's within the county, but I know uh, that uh, Mr. Cardiff has gotten that for us. Uh, barbecue uh, here in county beef with horse radish barbecue turkey roll haters turkey products with cranberries garlic mashed potatoes with gravy charcoal roasted fresh vegetables broccoli cauliflower grape tomatoes butternut squash mushrooms carrots and brussels sprouts from brussels <laughs> pasta salad with sun-dried tomatoes and pies to the stage i'm going to call uh jeff hearn Jeff in the mid 80s uh, and I shared a stage. We did South Pacific and emblazoned in my mind is him in a grass skirt and coconuts. <laughs> and he is going to be saying thank you to the great manufacturer in the sky, Jeff Hearn. Lord, thank you for the food we are about to receive. Thank you for friends and family and associates. And thank you for the opportunity to live in Huron County where all things are possible for manufacturers. Amen. I hope everyone had, uh, had a great time of, of eating and fellowshipping. I found a table. I wasn't given a place, but I found a place thanks to the Ouds. Thanks to the Dutch table, really. It's an all Dutch table. And I... Thanks for letting a Scotsman sit with you, and they got me a chair, and they even they sent me a bill. <laughs> oh man, you should be MC. That was good. Thank you. <laughs> bill is in the mail. All right, let's hear it for Hannah and Maggie Bergsma, who. That was terrific. That was really, really nice. It helped with the digestion, and it was beautiful music. Thanks so much. It was great. Also wanted to thank Cardiff's catering, as always. Just terrific. Very nice. Oh, HMA wanted to also let you know that those measuring tapes on your tables, they can be taken home, and everyone gets one. And uh, one person said you can measure the inches that were, you've developed over the past half an hour, but I didn't think that was a very funny joke, so I didn't <laughs> want to mention it. Uh, up next is our keynote speaker, and then we'll be on to the awards ceremony, and we're very, very privileged to have Dale Donaldson here. Dale Donaldson from Ilderton has farmed and been involved in food production his whole life and is the co-founder and owner of Everspring Farms Limited with locations in Ilderton and Seaforth. And Dale and his wife Marianne started this business in 1985 with a a flock of geese of of about 200. And today the Ilderton operation involves an integrated farm and poultry processing plant producing and distributing specialty and gourmet poultry products to a wide variety of stores, restaurants, and specialty markets throughout Ontario. More recently, Everspring has expanded into the development of products and solutions to address the the interest in emerging functional food sector with a production facility in Seaforth, right here in Seaforth. And at this location, Everspring manufactures a number of food products and ingredients, including sprouted grains and seeds, and other foods contributing uh, functional and nutritional advantages, along with custom milling, blending, and packaging services. In their two locations, Everspring employs 25 great employees. Dale has three daughters, two of which are still in university, and their oldest, Diane, who is involved in the Seaforth production operation. And uh, Dale's topic of presentation tonight will be how does the diversity of recent trends in the food industry relate to potential manufacturing opportunities 
and challenges within Huron County. Give it up for Dale Donaldson. Well, thank you very much for that glowing introduction. I think someone in my family wrote it. It definitely wasn't my daughter. I have two daughters still in university, so I can't retire yet. And I think I work for the third one, so. Um, I'm kind of a technological klutz. I think there's a clicker up here somewhere for me to run this, what my daughter calls a Prezi. I think this is it right here. Oh, is this it? Yeah. Okay, so if I get in trouble, <clears throat> then um, someone will come to my rescue. Okay, so <clears throat> what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about tonight is the, uh, well, I, I've been in agriculture all, my whole life, as uh, was mentioned in the introduction, and I have to say the food business isn't as simple as it used to be. Don't get me wrong, it's still a very exciting industry to be involved in, but there's a lot of changes happening. Um, some of them are very challenging, but ultimately, as Joe said in his introduction, we have to look at the glass half full. So I wanted to walk through what we see in our business here in town, in our sector, some of the changes that I think were happening in North America based on what the experts say, and how we might be able to adapt to them here and here in county as food manufacturers, and a little bit about what we do here along that line. Do I have to point this thing or something? There we go. Okay. First, a little bit about here in county. Uh, part of the, <clears throat> the good part about doing the research for this project was being reminded how fortunate we are to live in here in county. Uh, at this area, in this latitude of the world, um, on the west coast of Ontario, next to one of the greatest fre freshwater inland seas, it's small wonder that uh, here in county is the most productive uh, County in the province of Ontario has over 700,000 tillable acres of land. To put that in perspective, that's 1.4 times all the workable land in Prince Edward Island. I didn't know that. We have uh, 3,200, over 3,200 farm businesses, uh, 41 towns of varying sizes, most of them well serviced to support manufacturing, food production. Uh, it's quintessential small town Canada. We have right now between 40 and 50 food manufacturers and processors in the county. Uh, the breakdown is quite diverse, 14% meat and dairy, 29% milling and feed, 16% fruit, fruit and vegetable related, maple syrup, and the remainder are, are a diverse group, everything from garlic to spices and chocolate. Uh, small, medium size, and actually very large. One thing I uncovered, and someone maybe from Hensel Co-op could correct me if I'm wrong on this, um, the, the uh, grain uh, terminal in Hensel is apparently the largest inland um, grain terminal in North America. And that's, that's quite a fact. I, did, I wasn't aware of that. That's really something. The bigger picture, what's happening in North America? Uh, <clears throat> irrespective of our news earlier tonight about Leamington, which is kind of going to tie in a little bit with what I have to say, but uh, <clears throat> okay, so there's been an incredible amount of change in the food industry in a very short period of time. And that change has radically changed the way we live and eat. Um, we have the top, well, there's about 20 companies in um, North America that produce right now over 50% of value-added food products. It's predominantly processed food, snacks, beverage, meat and dairy. Uh, uh, agriculture and food production is still a, a big employer. Food processing accounts for 127,000 job, jobs here in Ontario. 3,000 companies are primarily involved in direct food and beverage processing. So it wasn't that long ago, maybe 50 years, uh, about a generation ago, 50% of our population 
lived and worked directly on farms. Today it's down to two th between two and three percent, largely through technological advances. So it's still a, 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 the main economic driver in our economy, food production, but those people have moved from the farms to the factories. And the food producing in those, produced in those factories is a lot different than grandma used to make. For example, a lot of that growth by the large companies has been by acquisition. Companies devouring their young, as one economist put it. But it, it's contributed to genuine growth. And it is a real, some would say, a credit to capitalism that that's occurred. However, uh, with that, um, there's an increasingly concern about the corporatization of food, I think, that's uh, growing probably at a, a fairly fast rate within society. And this is one area that I think in manufacturing that's interesting, is that food perhaps doesn't fall into quite the same um, category as other items and widgets that we make in our economy. For some reason, um, people are a little uneasy about the monopolization of food, probably for obvious reasons because it's something that's a necessity of life. I was thinking about it and I found this quote. Someone might re some of you might remember Adam Smith from high school economics. Historians consider him to be kind of the, the father figure of of uh, our modern, modern economics and the free market capitalists. And he said 200 years ago that it is not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer, or the baker that we expect our dinner, but from their regard to their own interest. Now, it took me a while to digest that and I thought about what that meant. And I think to paraphrase that into my um, language or, or the way I would say it, I think he's trying to say that m myself as a food manufacturer care more about making money than I do about whether or not you starve, to simplify and put it bluntly. Now, uh, I don't know if you've any, any, any of you have seen the movie Food, Inc. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting, it's supposed to be a documentary, it's not that objective, but it is very interesting if you ever get a chance to see it, and it kind of dissects this whole corporatization of food and farming and agriculture. And one line in the movie kind of stands out and crystallizes, I think, some of the concerns that we see growing in society. And, and uh, the interviewer is, uh, he's taking a, a farmer through a large chicken operation in Arkansas. And there's rows upon rows of chicken houses. And it's a warm, uh, hot summer day. They're in a pickup truck. The windows are down. And the interviewer asked the farmer, what do you think of that smell? And he says, it smells like money to me. So I think that's kind of what some people are concerned about with food, that, that the drive to make profit um, sometimes supersedes or overrides our concern and our relationship with our food, perhaps. Now, Adam Smith might also say, uh, the other phrase he coined was the invisible hand, that being that um, uh, the free market is a self-correcting system and that ultimately consumers and customers will determine what we produce and that we in business will, will uh, alter our, our, our activities to meet that demand. And that, that may be why we're seeing a segmentation today in the food industry, is that people are demanding change. As a few, I, I call them seeds of discontent, but you'll see these logos on a lot of food items. They probably weren't even around 10 years ago, a lot of them. Uh, perhaps the organic one was, but there's more and more all the time. We have a whole industry now devoted to gluten-free. It didn't even exist 15 years ago that I recall. We have allergen-free products now, a whole, a whole grain or a whole foods movement that didn't exist. and. Uh, the list goes on. So these are what I would call uh, catalysts of change, but therein perhaps lies an opportunity. And that's what I want to move into, into next, is opportunities and trends. Now, if it's true that the industry is in a state of change, it's also very true that the large companies have a very difficult time adapting to that change. 
And that's, an, uh, and that's something maybe that, that we as small or medium-sized uh, food manufacturers here in a county like Huron uh, could take advantage of and, and try to learn from. So I have a section here on opportunities and future trends, and some of them are quite relevant to our area of the world. There's no question that food manufacturing and processing is poised to be a growth market segment in North America. I mean, all the, uh, all the studies point to that. On top of that, the Canada brand is extremely strong. It's recognized around the world for safety and for quality. Exports are projected to grow 7% in 2014. So the question is, in that environment, how do we in Huron County capitalize on, this cha on the, the changing environment that we, we just went through there? So there's been a number of uh, studies commissioned on trends. These trends we're seeing in food were niche markets a very short time ago, and now they've developed into full-blown trends, and they're affecting the decision-making that's occurring within a lot of these companies. So uh, the one I selected to go through was done by a Waterloo company not too far from here, and uh, they interviewed food executives from comp uh, manufacturing companies all through Canada and the U.S. and into Europe, and they compiled their results and came up with about 10 or 12 definite trends that decisions are being made around. The first one, I didn't even know what it was, uh, how to define it. My daughter explained it to me. It's called premium, premium luxury food and beverage. Obviously, I don't buy any of these things, but a lot of people do. And I can't read it from here, and I would have loved to run the clip that Loblaws has, an ad for Black Label. It kind of says it... Uh, you completely understand what what they're getting at there, but these peop these products I call I kind of say they appeal to the food snob in all of us. So that, believe it or not, is the number one um, tr trend that uh, company executives are trying to, to tap into. So you would, if you weren't the Loblaws, it would be their black label line. But right behind it, and the, the the second most important trend is healthy and nutritious. Now, I would consider this to also almost to be a trend against something. Uh, back bef to our previous comments about the, the top 20 food companies, a lot of their success has been their formula, um, salt, sugar, f fat, the holy three products, extremely profitable, extend shelf life, which they need to circulate their products at a large distance, and extremely addictive. It's like as human beings, we're hardwired to... Uh, to love that stuff, crave it, continue to buy it and buy it again. Problem is, it's, it's starting to wreak havoc in our, um, f in our society for health, diabetes, um, you know, obesity, things like that, especially in our youth. So the drive to, to healthy and nutritious is really a movement away from those products. And uh, I, I wouldn't want to say this is the real reason, but on top of the news that we just heard tonight about Heinz uh, closing in Leamington, and, and who knows what the decisions for that are. Again, that's a, that's a, big, a big corporation. I think it just got sold or bought by uh, Berkshire Hathaway a few months back. Uh, what's his name? Warren Buffett. I mean, who knows where the decisions come from. But Kellogg's in London just two weeks ago, or I believe last week, laid off 20% of their workforce too. So traditional cereals are shrinking and for the first time um, in a long time. Uh, again, uh, the question is why? And perhaps it's because they're just not as healthy as what we, th we think they used to be. Locally sourced. This one, believe it or not, is number three. And I was kind of surprised. This is definitely here to stay. This is not going away. Even big companies are trying to adapt to this now. Walmart, believe it or not, it says are strategically deciding to locate their stores around areas where they can geographically locate as many products local as possible. And Walmart is kind of the opposite of what I would think of as local. But they, they understand that this is a huge driver in our, in, in our choices of food. Uh, last week I had breakfast at McDonald's and I looked down on the placemat on the tray and there was a picture of a neighbor down the road, a chicken farmer lady, and a little story about her and I felt all really local because I was having my chicken burger from my neighbor down the road. So you know, they, they have ways of trying to um, address this issue, but I, I think at the heart of it, and 
I, no one has a real good feel for what local means, but I think at the heart of it, it's about um, connection to our food and understanding and, and the story of our food and where it comes from. And that knowledge is being communicated in a lot of ways, not just a down-the-road story. It's being communicated through smartphones. 60% of shoppers are now using smartphones to look up where products fr fr come from, compare pricing, um, get it, getting the story of food. They're Twittering and hashtagging, which I have no idea what that means or how to do that, but that's definitely happening. See, I'm in, in a very short period of time, I've actually become very obsolete. So that, um, that change, and, and that's an, an for here in county here, in the heart of one of the most productive agricultural areas of the world, here in county has a story. I'm not sure what we do with that and, and how we tell that story, but it definitely should be looked at considering the area we live in and, and the, the agricultural bounty, people in urban and city would love to know us. It's like we're in another country to them. They just, they don't seem to know how to connect. And I think there's more and more of that happening. So that's something really is an opportunity. Organic, of course, that's the oldest one. It's not going away either. It's continuing to grow even in hard economic times. Number five on these executives list is what they call private <coughs> label manufacturing. Um, these are specific products that, well, I put up um, Loblaw's blue menu. Um, uh, people go to private label bef because they feel they're getting good value and they're getting a quality product. So it's, a, it's kind of a branding, um, a, um, a, I guess a branding phenomena but uh, companies that are doing that. And, and we in here in County have an opportunity in this regard because an interesting part about um, the new products that are being developed, they're being developed by people in urban areas that are marketers. They're very market savvy. They don't have bricks and mortar. They don't want to have bricks and mortar. They don't really have infrastructure, but they're creative and they, they have ideas and they're hashtaggers and Twitters. And they would love to come to companies like us and others that have some infrastructure that they can work with to type, uh, try to develop their products along with our own products. So it's, it's a, it's a win-win scenario, I think, an opportunity that's growing. Number six is uh, allergen and gluten-free. Kind of self-explanatory. This gluten-free thing has grown 28% compoundedly every year for the past four years. Uh, it started out as a reaction to people with genuine celiac. Uh, some people just literally cannot consume a kernel of wheat because it inflames their intestinal tract and causes them to be very, very ill. But it's now grown into be a much broader segment than uh, that. And processing plants like ours or perhaps some of yours that are um, certified gluten-free, in other words, don't handle gluten or nut-free, have a, have a huge advantage now to produce products that didn't really, wasn't there even a very short time ago. Companies now are asking, are you nut free? Are you gluten free? And if you are, you know, you're, you're much further in the door than you were before. Functional food and beverage. I put this one in, this one's one that we spent a lot of time with. And uh, you know, all I'm going to say is the classic example, or the best example uh, we've stumbled into, uh, kind of a very serendipitous situation. We met Dr. Craig Hudson and his wife Susan, who happened to be here tonight. They live in Toronto, so they were a little late arriving. But uh, through uh, Gateway great, the Gateway Project here in town, I didn't know each of us existed. Um, Craig developed this, what I, what I consider to be a classic example of functional food. A functional food is a product that has an active ingredient. It's a food, but if you consume it, not only can you enjoy it as a food, but it will actually address a specific uh, health or physiological problem that you may have, rather than taking a pharmaceutical drug or something with side effects. And this product is basically um, a pumpkin seed flour. Pumpkin seed is a very high level of tryptophan, which is an amino acid and used properly in the right combination with other, with other uh, food products that Craig has developed, or it's a blend, basic, very simple food blend. It allows people, if you take a scoop of that bef before you go to sleep tonight, at night, it's, it's just like those two harps we had there before. 
They're like, it, it really helps people with insomnia that can't sleep go to sleep. A very, very, uh, I guess, increasing problem we have in our, you know, busy lifestyles. So we were fortunate enough to be able to meet up with him and are, are now helping them to co-pack the product. It's doing very, very well for them. But there's m a number of products that are like that in the marketplace now. They're foods, but they address a specific health, uh, a specific uh, need in the marketplace. Whole grains and fruits, again, it's a number, s number eight trend. It's really a trend against, like the other one, ag against what we call unwhole things or processed things. Again, a big concern for the big companies. White bread has dropped year after year in the uh, bread category. If you take a look at the local uh, bakery section, it's uh, less every year and it's being replaced by whole grains, ancient grains, that kind of thing. Non-GMO, uh, this is the last one that's kind of interesting and uh, we could debate this one forever. A lot of people try to debate it along the, signs of si along the lines of science. I'd just like to th offer a suggestion here. I, I have no idea if, it's, if it sounds probably, uh, I don't want to say if it's good science or bad science, but I think it's more of a, de a debate between science and, uh, I had the, a really good word for this, just bear with me. I thought, oh, science and sentiment. I think what we're really talking about here with non-GMO, again, is the control, technological um, control of food in the hands of companies, patented food, the rights to food. It opens up a whole lot of moral, ethical questions. So I think it's more of a debate between s science and sentiment, if, if that makes sense. Kind of like, I just thought of that tonight when I was driving here. So don't put a lot of stock into that. Our st okay, so um, there was one other trend actually, and it, I forgot to put it in the, uh, it missed the thingy there uh, when we made it, the, the bubble I think it's called, and that is uh, ethnic food. It was in the middle. And ethnic food is not just new Canadians, which I was mistaken. It's, it's our kids. Um, we have three daughters, they all go to sushi. I've never took them, to, we've never taken them to sushi in our lives, but they go there about, you know, every other week. That's raw fish, I think, isn't it? Yeah. And so ethnic foods are uh, not only the, the taste of new Canadians, but also um, people that are uh, ex much more experimental with food. Very quickly, our story, what we're trying to do to meet these, um, we have a production facility in Seaforth here where we're, uh, the area we're trying to address is what we call functional food, and that cuts across a few of the lines we talked about, basically taking primary food products and improving them nutritionally or functionally um, through some different processes. So uh, the first one we've worked with, it's kind of been a long and winding trail, but uh, it, this one's finally doing well for us. It's sprouted grains, or some people call them malted grains and seeds. Uh, basically, we take seeds and make them more digestible and available uh, nutritionally through the process of seed germination or sprouting. We, we do it in a series of tanks, and it, it's a wet process. It's basically water, air, and um, th a lot of bakeries, a lot of companies are, are getting interest and in requests from that for customers that having difficulty digesting grains and seeds unsprouted. So. Uh, on top of that, we added a process, or we were able to integrate a nutrient to the sprouting process. In this case, we add uh, omega-3 from um, algal or fish oil. So we're now able to have a food product that we germinate. The nutrient is added through the water, very much like you would in soil, only it's not in soil. It's uh, basically just a wet process. It's a 24 to 40 hour, pro hour process. We dry it back down and it becomes an ingredient to improve the nutritional value of, of foods. It, it kind of looks like a still. If it was, it would be more profitable. But it, that's um, it just a kind of, a, it, it's starting to take off for us. We have it in now, uh, it, it, it's been a slow, pro slow process because it's, it adds cost to the product. And believe it or not, what's interesting is some of our, our biggest accounts right now are from the pet food industry. Now that tells you something about what we're thinking about when it comes to food and, and our companion animals, doesn't it? Barley grass juice, that's where we take barley, sprout it all the way up and grow it into a plant, cut it and juice it, and then that's a, a frozen puck, it becomes a frozen puck that has enzyme activity. We kind of want to have a, a kind of word of mouth following for that product. We've never got it into stores yet. 
but we're having a lot of interest from it uh, now. It's frozen, so it becomes a distribution challenge. Uh, another juice product we do is growing, actually, it started in a farm in Wingham, so it's a Huron County product. Uh, Marlene Winnick has a farm, I don't know if any of you know her, but she's at the edge of the county. Um, anyway, uh, that's a very, very high nutritional berry. Uh, it's very, very high in vitamin A, vitamin C. It comes from Eastern Europe and Asia. It's very common, but there's more and more interest in being able to improve beverages through uh, adding juices like that to them. So uh, there's a few growers that are planting trees and we're able to process it for them. Now this one we stumbled onto by accident and it's kind of got a lot of legs on it now. It's what we call a healthy fat replacer. Kind of sounds like an oxymoron. But the reality is that um, saturated fat and trans fats, actually just last week the U.S. has have now banned all trans fats in foods. I mean, a lot of companies are voluntarily removing them because it leads to high cholesterol. But saturated fat is still a problem. And this is basically <laughs> water, um, oil. It could be any oil you want. Uh, we use sunflower oil. And uh, a seed that we bring in a lot of from South America called chia. And it's extremely high in fiber. And when you add that combination together and put it through a process or a specific machine, it churns out this product that all bound together with the fiber and the seed. And it, it's kind of starting to take off. So we didn't, it was a kind of an accident that it happened, but sometimes you take those for the ones that don't turn out. This is an R&D project we're still working on, but it's interesting. It's a, uh, mushrooms grow in the dark, but if you expose them to sunlight, their vitamin D level spikes phenomenally. So uh, a group at the GFTC uh, and uh, mushroom growers have perfected the process of adding ultraviolet light to dried mushrooms and you know milling them into a powder that's very very high in vitamin D levels so it's a natural process only we just speed it up through uh, artificial process of ultraviolet light so at some point hopefully we'll be able to get that into the industry we do do a, a fair bit of custom production and co-packing services that come along with our customers again they want to buy an ingredient but they need someone to help package it and blend it and you know they need all the regulations HACCP and certifications so we're able to do that and that's always nice so this is one product that I just this didn't work out but I wanted to mention it um, there's a uh, you'll see it on almost a lot of labels if you buy bars it'll have a thing in there called chicory root inulin now inulin is a a carbohydrate molecule, it's a very long and it's uh, one of the highest sources of fiber. It's chicory root is 70% inulin and it, in a food product it elevates the fiber levels and it, it allows companies to make things much more healthy because of that. Worldwide it's like a multi, it's like 500 million dollar industry and it's only produced in Europe and South America and for some reason there's none produced in North America and it grows wonderfully here in here in county, uh, this part of the world. We did it for three years, but the problem is it's a capital intensive thing to build a plant to refine it. So it was just beyond our reach. So we kind of put it on a shelf, but I just threw it in there because there's a lot of products like that that we could be uh, working on and adapting to the changes in the marketplace. So I just kind of want to close on the path ahead and uh, what do we do with these things? I mean, uh, um, Obviously, there's challenges in everything. Um, in this part of the world, and I, I had to really dig deep to come up with challenges because you can't do a thorough assessment without them. Apparently, we have an aging workforce. I don't think of it that way. I just think we're getting better, not older. But apparently, we have an aging workforce in, here in rural Ontario. Um, our transportation costs to urban centers are supposed to be higher. I don't really buy that one. We get quotes all the time, and probably they are marginally higher. But um, a lack of services, well, perhaps. Uh, but they're not things that couldn't be addressed with a, if the need was there. We're right, and we've got all kinds of hydro, all kinds of water. We've got all the infrastructure and more than what we see in a lot of the, uh, the urban centers and in the GTA, in my opinion. And I'll get to the good part in a minute, but um, one of the biggest barriers, though, I will say, is the regulatory framework we in food manufacturing have to go through to get into the marketplace. Uh, I put a few of them up there. 
it probably costs about 50000 to put in a HACCP program. And for a, f a small startup company or a smaller company, that's always a challenge. You know, there's always the kosher you have to have for things and organic certifications. Lately, it's been insurance premiums that people, or uh, insurance companies these companies want us to have. We've had two requests in the last month for $10 million in, in uh, liability insurance just to, for them to test, mar uh, test some of our products. And I don't know when food became such a high-risk uh, um, consumer item, but apparently it is. <coughs> uh, this article did come out in the free press a few weeks ago about um, population decreasing here in rural Ontario and inc um, median age increasing. And uh, it just, I think, just lends the idea that what you're doing here in the HMA and things talked about earlier tonight to keep manufacturing strong and vibrant and the networking that's going on, how vitally important that is to keep um, rural Ontario. And it, won't, it doesn't take a lot. To, to keep uh, people employed here, you know, schools open, that kind of thing, that becomes the heart of it. <clears throat> the strengths, of, all of us know this, but just to be reminded, I mean, I, I've just put a few down here, but um, we have an experienced and productive workforce. Uh, you know, we're right in the heartland of the, all this productive land, and it's very diverse agricultural production. We've got strong community support I mean, we underestimate that one. Uh, it's uh, the, the spirit of volunteerism, that kind of thing. Economically stable and favorable is probably underestimating the word infrastructure. I just did a quick assessment of taxes. This may not be completely accurate, but uh, Toronto says they have 3%, London 3.8% mill rate. This is commercial properties. And in Seaforth and town here, we're paying 23 I mean, that more than offsets any trans higher transportation costs we might have in a year. So I'd just like to uh, thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to, you know, spout off some of my thoughts here tonight. And uh, we're, sir, I, I, I don't understand why the big companies want to always locate on the 400 series highways. I, I really don't get that. Maybe it's because they just like seeing their signs up there for all the people to drive by. I wonder if that's all it is. It's just a whole paradigm shift for them. But we're certainly glad to be here stuck at the end of, of uh, Railway Street. So that's it. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you very much, Dale. And he was kind of making fun of the fact that I said give it up. But I think we should have gave it up for Dale. Thank you so much. That was terrific. And uh, those are your barley pucks in the urinals, I believe, so we're just really keeping the, uh, the local food thing. That's right, some great marketing going on there. That's what he could come up with for social media, so that's... We are on to our award ceremony now, which is very, it's great, it's very exciting. I always enjoy this, I've been here a few years, and I always, uh, I really, truly do come away and I'm not involved in any way in manufacturing, but I come away with always some sort of memorable moment. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, the awards will be on this side. I guess maybe if people, right, Carol, maybe if people come up on this side and head off this way, sort of stay put by the ice sculpture, have their picture taken by Sarah, that might work out all well, fine. If you'd like to say some words, feel free to do so. If you'd like to, you know, go, Eat it or something. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I've never seen it at HMA, but um, <laughs> don't feel bad. If um, and in all seriousness, um, in honor of Frank Palin, if your knees are sore and you don't want to come up on the stairs, that's just fine. We can meet you. We can meet you here, and uh, we can find a mic for you if you like to say some words as well, too. So um, let's get underway. We're going to call Michael Nephew up, and we're going to call uh, Frank Palin. And uh, we're going to start things off with the scholarships. Hi, I'm uh, Michael Nephew, and I'm a regional manager and team leader for the uh, commercial and the ag account management team at the United Communities Credit Union. Um, First off, I'd like to uh, thank HMA for uh, tonight's event. It was uh, wonderful. 
But I think you'll all agree with me that we just uh, experienced a tremendous meal. So I'd like to give a round of applause for everyone who put that on. And uh, Dale, you gave us a lot to think about. Um, in my own case, uh, I'm like everybody else. I went away to get my experience and then came back to Heron County for the lifestyle side of it. And I was asked today to uh, come and present these awards. And really, this is about keeping our young people in the community. Back in 2007, we forged a partnership which with HMA offering scholarships to local students um, who chose to live and work in Huron County and become part of our skilled workforce. Our current program, the My United Student Award program, enables students participating in uh, apprenticeships to apply for up to $4,000 in funds. So we hope that uh, everyone will consider applying when the applications come out in the spring of 2014. So let's get to know our uh, students. Good evening, everyone. We've prepared a uh, brief uh, PowerPoint pictures to introduce you to our six nominees this evening. So I think I just click the button and this will work. Awesome. So our, our nominees or our applications that we received for the uh, apprenticeships our first one, and these are just in alphabetical order, and all my uh, scholarship applicants are all in this area, so they're nice and close to their pictures they submitted, so that's awesome. Uh, so Zach uh, Bedard is a, an electrician, um, and he's a co-op student at South Huron District High School. He's currently in the process of being signed as an apprentice with his employer. Zach lives in Exeter. His employer is uh, Path Electric. And he requested a cooperative education placement with JMR Electric, hoping to get some hands-on experience as an electrician. He was able to pick up a lot of trade-specific skills and knowledge while completing over 300 hours. The requirement was only 186 hours. This summer, Zach was hired by Path Electric in Exeter. He worked on site, earning the respect of his coworkers and a lot of overtime. For the cooperative education program, Zach completed research on a variety of trades in Huron County. Um, he was originally interested in both automotive service technician and, elect and electrician careers, and he decided on electrician. So that's Zach. Our next applicant is Sam Butt, a carpenter, and he's a co-op student at Central Huron Secondary School and has enrolled in the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program. He's completed 627 hours towards his apprenticeship, and uh, he lives in uh, Seaforth. His employer is Dan Blake Buildings and Renovations, Inc. And in his application, he submitted, as a little boy, I was fascinated with tools and building things. I would always help my dad with construction projects around the house and help build the pool deck and shed. Talking to people in the trade, I learned that licensed carpenters are needed and that a high number of licensed carpenters will be retiring in a few years. Every day I have to make measurements and calculations to make sure I cut lumber properly for a job. Recently I help lay out and assemble posts, beams and trusses for a horse barn. I also help put strapping on the roof and put steel on. Our next applicant is Jason Huber, from Pl uh, he's a plumber and he's a student at St. Anne's Catholic Secondary School and lives in Godrich. Uh, he has a co-op placement with Drew Evans Plumbing of Godrich. And he indicated that he chose this trade because I wanted to do something in the skilled trades. I took the co-op program in high school and my counselor recommended plumbing. So I tried it and loved it. There is enough jobs for plumbers, but there is, a not, in, but there is not enough apprenticeship opportunities. Evans Plumbing noted that Jason has brought many great assets to our job sites, not only being able to work well with others, respectful and professional, he continually shows an involved interest in learning all aspects of plumbing. He also shows initiative and is very mindful of customer service and looking after their property by keeping the job site clean. Jason is quick to catch on to things and is prepared with the, with the next tool or material needed to complete the jobs. Our next applicant is Raven Kenny, carpenter. She's a grade 12 student at Effie Medill Secondary School in the high skills major construction program and she lives near Brussels. She noted in her application that throughout high school, I have developed many hands-on skills and carpentry techniques. 
I have had opportunities to build a deck off-site and learn how to use tools and do a good job putting the deck together. I chose this trade because my dad does construction and most of my life I have helped him on many projects. I have helped build, I have helped build our new house, done cement forming, drywall, mudding, tile flooring, as well as putting up trusses and bee pine ceilings. My experiences have been great and I hope to learn more. Evan Lyons, machinist. Uh, he's a student at Conestoga College. He lives near Palmerston. His employer, R&R Machine and Tool, Inc., east of Wingham. And he submitted, uh, at R&R Machine and Tool, I, have always, I always use my hands on, on skills to complete various tasks and projects, such as drilling, tapping, CNC work, turning, grinding, and milling, as well as inspection of completed parts, applying different finishes. I also do a small amount of CNC programming, setup, and maintenance of machines. I pursued this trade because it is fast-paced and focuses on precision manufacturing. I also enjoy working with my hands and using lace and milling machines. I worked in Kitchener before R&R Machine and Tool and decided that I wanted a job closer to home and a job with a better learning environment. And our last applicant, applicant uh, Ryan uh, Smith from, as a machinist is enrolled in the apprenticeship program and currently awaiting the call to start at Fanshawe College, and he lives near Auburn. Employer Smith Welding and Machine Shop Limited. Ryan works in the machine shop and builds hydraulic cylinders from scratch for our equipment. This includes cutting the material, machining the rod, gland and piston with a .001 inch. Once the cylinder is assembled, I weld it and pressure test it for leaks. And Ryan has taken the time and has researched why this trade is so important in Huron County. Farming is a huge industry here, and welding and the company, wel uh, company serves the community with our fully equipped machine shop. We are continuously fixing farm equipment parts, such as cylinders, PTOs, and parts made specifically for their equipment. Machinists are in high demand and in our area, and in our area, and we feel that Ryan will benefit a great deal as he begins his apprenticeship program here as a machinist. There we have our uh, six applicants to the apprenticeship scholarship program. I'm sure you're as blown away by these applications as we were, so we decided that we were going to offer four scholarships um, each of the recipients will receive $1,000. Um, just before I do that um, and announce those winners, essentially what I also want to thank is all the businesses out there that offer apprenticeships because these scholarships are great, except if they have nowhere to go, it doesn't work. So thank you again for everybody who offers the apprenticeship program. And in no particular order, because I've shuffled and reshuffled these things a hundred times at the table. Uh, the first is Raven Kenny. <laughs> Ryan Smith. <laughs> Evan Lyons. And Jason Huber. Okay. So on behalf of our board and our staff at the United Communities Credit Union, we wish you continued success and congratulations. Okay, thank you very much. It's always an exciting time getting their pictures taken. Yes, and thank you, Michael, for mentioning the fact that, that the folks are opening up their businesses and, and, uh, and creating apprenticeship opportunities. I also wanted to make a shout out to the wonderful teachers that we have on both here in Perth Catholic and Avon Maitland. 
They do tremendous work led by Tim Martins on the, on the, on the Catholic side, Jeff Pirro, Ken Bailey on the Avon Maitland side. And I've worked with these fellows before and, uh, and some of the teachers that they have um, with them and they just do tremendous work in inspiring, not only inspiring the students, but, but going out and, uh, and shaking your hands and, uh, and encouraging you to get involved in the future and you can see the future is bright, so. Very good, they got their pictures. Oh, you're working on it, that's fine. While they're working on that, I wanted to make mention our bronze sponsors and you've seen them here on the screen, Municipality of Central Huron. Oh, Central Huron. I live in you, Central Huron. You should be a silver sponsor, but I'll, I'll talk to you about that next year. <laughs> Ken Pal Farm Products. I'm going to get in trouble by somebody here tonight. I know I am. ProSafe uh, Incorporated Safety Engineering, Workplace Safety and Prevention Services. And um, those are our great sponsors. We've had such a, such a great, yes, great response. The awards get better and better every year, so we really, we really thank you for your, uh, for your encouragement. How did things go there at the tables? Did anybody seriously put some pepperettes in their purses so Frank can't get them? <laughs> Sorry, Frank. I'll never talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> I figured this would be the last time I'm emceeing anyway, so I'm just going give to give it all a go. Rob Bundy will be back next year, so I think, unless Alice got him doing something else. I don't know. All right, let's head into the award ceremony. All right. Now I have, there we are. Our first award is the Junior Manufacturing of the Year Award. This will be awarded to an individual under 30 years of age who is working in a manufacturing business in Huron County and has made a significant contribution to his or her workplace. And the nominees are... Hi, my name is Gwen Burgess. I'm one half of Rosella. We manufacture eco resin bangles and rings. I'm so honored to be nominated for the Junior Manufacturer of the Year, so thank you so much to the Nominating Academy for considering me. We also branched into wholesale and are now retailing in many stores across North America, most recently the Museum of Modern Art gift shops. Hello, my name is Joshua Nerp. Um, I work at Life Farm Cheese and I appreciate being nominated for the Junior Manufacturer Award. Uh, some of my duties at uh, Life Farm Cheese include uh, just general system administration and uh, taking care of all the cheeses uh, throughout the creating stages all the way up to the end. Currently we make Gouda style cheeses and in the future we plan on making tomes um, and uh, a Spanish uh, cheese which is um, a cheese dipped in wine and uh, aged for about uh, four to three months um, until it's ready to be served. Thank you for your time. And the winner is, please don't let me get a paper cut. Thank you. Gwyn Burgess. Okay, she chose not to say It was very nice. <laughs> Thank you for that laughter. Was that my friend over the back? That was really nice. And um, again, this is always an education for me. I'm just amazed by what's, by what's happening. So when I saw the videos again yesterday, I was just, I had no idea. 
And uh, incidentally, I just wanted to let you know that Gwyn is in talks with Martha Stewart. I think I can, I can maybe, I can mention that. It's amazing what she's, what she's up to and how many people are interested in what she's, what she's up to. Okay, our next award is the Innovative Manufacturing Award. This will be awarded to a Huron County manufacturer who has implemented significant process improvements, organizational improvements, or expansions, and has demonstrated competitive success, innovation, and leadership. And the nominees are. Hi, my name is Ken Hines. I'm the general manager here at Design Concrete. We've been in business since 1979 in the same location. We employ approximately 25 people with five new hires this year. Our main business is the manufacturing of precast concrete sound barriers and our innovation has always been our machinery. Uh, we produce all our own machinery and uh, make it as efficient as possible. Thank you for the nomination. Hi, my name is Ryan Green. I'm the sales manager at Design Concrete. Uh, we've had the fortunate position of being a part of a growing market in the precast concrete industry for the last few years. Uh, we started out with our roots in the agricultural products, uh, which we still do manufacture, but uh, we've moved on to infrastructure products including sound barriers and retaining walls. Thanks again for the nomination. Hello, I'm uh, Dick Peaver from uh, Double O Marine Products. Uh, we uh, appreciate the fact that we've been nominated for this innovation award. Uh, what, uh, as part of here in district contracting, uh, which is in the marine construction business and Maitland Valley Marina, we were looking for a better way of producing our own docks. Uh, for to create a long-lasting reasonably priced product and we came up with the concept of the double O tubes uh, in conjunction with uh, uh, Big O and uh, we developed uh, that over a period of time into a uh, dock product that uh, is easy to work with and uh, has a, a very long longevity, no rust uh, uh, components to it, and uh, uh, so that it's been a product that uh, we've been using ourselves for 15 years, and uh, over that time we've uh, built uh, a business out of it as well, producing it for other uh, marinas uh, in Ontario. Hi, I'm Jason Oud. This is my brother Stephen Oud, and this is my brother Andrew Oud. We own and operate Vanastra Packaging, and more recently, since 2005, C4th Elevators. We actually are members of the Huron Manufacturing Association and are very pleased and honored and want to thank the nomination committee for the nomination of Innovative Manufacturer. Yes, at Vanastra Packaging, we're a custom packaging facility and we're a bulk transloader. We saw a need for our customers to get on rail, so in 2005, we purchased Seaforth Elevators, which fulfilled our need to get on rail and to actually have bulk storage. We also aligned ourselves well with Pioneer and LAC, so we can originate grain and also sell seed to the farmers. Uh, we think we're innovative because the way we network uh, the producer with the end user and we're willing to try new products to make this uh, synergy more efficient. Uh, so we'd like to thank uh, the Huron Manufacturing for the nomination and uh, continue great business for 2014. Very good, and the winner is. Design Concrete Systems Unlimited, or Limited.
Thank you very much. Uh, this is because of the people that work for us. It's uh, a team effort, that's for sure. And um, thank you to the Huron Manufacturing Association. Now we're on to the Innovative Product Award. The Innovative Product Award will be awarded to a Huron County manufacturer who has successfully met the challenge of transforming a good idea into a product on the market since, since 2007. The winning product will be chosen based on innovation, creativity, acceptance in the marketplace, delivery of value to customers, competitive advantages and business success. And the nominees are Hi, my name is Ben Hogevorst and I'm president of Brightspan Building Systems and uh, what we do is we make fabric covered steel frame buildings. We're located at the north end of Wingham uh, where we've been in our new plant for one year. Uh, one of our, our innovative products of this year has been our easy access building and uh, it's been it's created a lot of interest because it's the first in the fabric building industry uh, of its kind in that Normally in our industry, uh, everyone always needs to enter in the ends of the building. That's just the, de the design. So for the last 18 years, that's been the, the common method. Uh, we sat down uh, one evening, my partner and I, Rob Stute, and we kind of drafted on a napkin um, this idea of a, a side entrance that was really created by uh, myself driving through the countryside seeing uh, new equipment sheds with side entrances, and they weren't entered in the ends as often. So. Uh, we kind of doodled on a napkin and came up with, with this design, which allows us to enter into the sides, as you can see. And uh, it's actually been a great success. Uh, our, our internet hits uh, skyrocketed, and already we've sold five buildings this year. So we consider it a great success. I uh, just want to thank the HMA for nominating us for the Innovative Award, and uh, have a great evening. My name is Diane Donaldson. I'm the Quality Assurance and Product Development Manager at Everspring Farms. Um, for years now, we've been sprouting various grains and seeds for both functional and nutritional advantages, um, as well as serving um, our commercial customers with bulk ingredients um, of our spreaded grains and seeds. We also have a new retail line we've just launched of various different spreaded grains and seeds, including rice, oats, quinoa, wheat, and flax. Um, we hope to expand this line in future years to include some baking mixes and things like that. And uh, we'd like to thank you for nominating for us, us for this award. Thank you for nominating us for the Innovative Award. Um, a progressive has a lot of different products out there and a number of years ago we decided to build uh, a remote controlled mower on tracks for steep hillside mowing and that's our innovative product and um, thanks for nominating us. Now Frank? Okay. And the winner is Progressive Turf Equipment Incorporated. Thanks for the nominating committee for doing a terrific job for everyone here. And I, we really appreciate this. Um, it goes to show that the hard work for our team back at the plant does pay off. Um, sometimes it takes a long time, 
this particular product. We spent at least three years in design and testing and so forth, and um, but it's finally come to fruition, and that's what we have to do in county. Like I always say, it must be the water here because there's a lot of things going on properly here. Doesn't matter if it's sports, manufacturing, community involvement, and so forth. And again, thanks for this uh, trophy for the guys. Um, number four, let's go into number four, and uh, this is the Corporate Citizenship Award. And this will be awarded to a manufacturing company in Huron that has made outstanding contributions to their community and to the Huron Manufacturing Association. And the nominees are... Luke Janmut from Progressive Turf Equipment and Seaforth. I'm the president there. Thank you for nominating us. We like to get involved in different projects around the community, be it HMA activities or different things to make our life a bit better. Thank you again for nominating Progressive Turf. Award. Progressive Turf Equipment. Thanks again uh, for the nominating committee. Um, Progressive um, has been able to do some of this stuff, um, get involved with different things. Um, I always find that if we complain, and I complain a fair bit, but if we don't get involved, we don't have a right to complain. So I try to make a few little, make some time available for different committees, um, manufacturing side of it, community side of it. I don't get involved in sports very much, but I try to offset that by doing other things. Um, we're able to do this. I can take time away because of the, the team effort back at, at work. Um, I know it's controlled there, so I don't have to worry and spend extra hours. I can put them towards involvement in the communities. And having said all that, um, I see so many manufacturers out here. Um, we want to keep manufacturing going in the community, in the county, and we've lost a lot of large manufacturing businesses over time. And I think it's the smaller companies seem to be able to grow better than the, manu the, the larger groups. And uh, we can all put a little bit of effort into that and we can make this a better community, better county. Huron County is known for a lot of different things. And um, we just have to pull together and keep us going for our, for our future generations is what it's going to amount to. And uh, again, thanks for the nominating. And thank you again, Luke. Oh, okay, very good. All right, Green first, Green Leader Award. Here we go. Will be awarded to Huron County manufacturer who has demonstrated leadership in development of environmentally su sustainable processes, policies, and products. And the nominees are. All right, welcome to Composite Creations. I'm Andy Phillips, the owner. This year, we're very happy to hear that we were nominated for environmental. 
uh, one of the environmental awards with the HMA. I think as we talked amongst the staff, we found that uh, one of the reasons we may have been nominated is we've taken it a step further. We've, uh, we've partnered with a lot of our suppliers and vendors and even competitors. If it's a simple thing such as uh, transporting product from Toronto, some of our specialty materials, we actually get together with our vendors and we, uh, we send one truck, not five trucks a week coming out to deliver a few small packages. So it helps lower that whole emissions component. Um, we had to go out and find renewable resources. And this year we're very happy to say um, we spent some time working with Flax, which was um, a renewable plant that was grown right here in the Huron County area a number of decades ago. And now that we're able to utilize it, we can actually start to see the offset of the use of fiberglass or the offset of Kevlar or Aramid. And because uh, this, this Flax material has properties that are far better than, than some of the conventional petroleum-based products. So we feel by introducing a boat that's made of flax, introducing resin systems that are made of soybeans and corn, that we're actually helping our customers feel better about the product that they're buying. But more importantly, we're actually there to help create a better environment uh, as there's less emissions and, uh, and byproduct. And I think on a closing note, we have been known as one of the go-to shops, and that is because of the infusion process that we use where it actually uh, holds the fabrics in position as the adhesives or resins are introduced. And all of this is done under vacuum, under a sheet of plastic, which again, stops the emissions from happening. So they're not getting into the environment. Um, the old messy days of fiberglass are long gone. So from, from this standpoint, we're very happy to, to be involved with this. And for those that came out this year to uh, partake in our very first ever river cleanup day, um, on the Maitland River from Auburn to Balls Bridge, it was a huge success. And those river cleanup days, um, for us, was the first one. But again, um, being someone who's on the water a lot, many, many weekends in a year, it's amazing how much cleaner the water is getting. And again, this comes down to everyone. Everyone in the area who is working harder, more diligent, to ensure that their byproduct, their waste products, are not getting into the grounds, they're not getting into the drinking waters in their rivers and in our lakes. And it's hats off to everyone because it was a community effort when we see how that transformation has taken place over the last five years, especially on the Maitland, uh, the clarity of the water. It was amazing to see that this year. So, so as a whole, um, we thank everyone for, for, for doing what they're doing at their businesses too. And we're sharing with a little bit of what we're doing with you on, on what we see to be um, an environmentally proactive way. So again, thanks for the nominations to everyone who, who, who nominated us. It was a bit of a surprise, but we thank you just the same. And uh, best of luck to everyone. Thanks. Hi, I'm Gwen Burgess, one half of Rosella. Jessica and I are honoured to be considered in the Green Leadership category, so thank you so much to the nominating committee for considering us. We're so proud to be using Entropy's Eco Resin. What Entropy does is great, because instead of using petroleum-based products, they use products from waste streams or pine oils. And they actually estimate that this reduces the carbon footprint in half. By making small changes, like changing our resin, we're really taking steps to reduce our carbon footprint, and we hope that this eventually preserves the environment from which we take inspiration for our pieces. And the winner of the Green Leader Award is Composite Creations. I think it's uh, kind of ironic tonight that we have two companies that actually work with resin, uh, a composite material, if you will. And I think of uh, back about 10 years ago, if you used the word resin, fiberglass in the same sentence, let alone the same textbook, they'd actually out of a room. Uh, I think that something was wrong with you when you, speak, when you speak of something environmentally, you know, proactive when you work with these fiberglass materials. But it's nice now 
to see that our industry has taken big jumps, big steps, allowing us to do what's you know truly correct and right, cleaning up our uh, work processes. It's been a big, long stride as an industry as a whole, but also it feels great to do it here at home too. Um, it has been such a great uh, success for us that we were now starting in December teaching how to do this infusion process in the city of Toronto to a lot of bigger companies. We're actually writing the program and the literature and all that stems from here at home and here in county, the efforts that we made here. I invite, I truly mean this, I invite everyone here to send us some business cards. We are now in a position with our company, we're now getting the attention we've been looking for for a long time. We're now in a position where people are asking us, if we bring you a project, who do you have in your neighborhood who can offer cabinetry skills, electrical skills, machining skills that are going in conjunction with the product that we're building? So I, I'm, I'm open to meeting each and every one of you and having you come on board. And it's great if your card is there, I can hand it out immediately to them. <laughs> it's great, I, I, know, I know they're in the, in the HMA catalog, but it's tough to send the catalog when I wanna keep that when it's mine. But, uh, <laughs> but just the same, I, I look forward to meeting each and every one of you when you have the time to stop by Vanastra. And again, to everyone, thank you for this, it means a lot. Okay, Employer of the Year Award will be awarded to a Huron County manufacturer who has strived to retain their current employees through innovative ideas and professional development. And the nominees are... Yes, my name is Dale Donaldson, um, the, one of the owners of Everspring Farms. And we we're uh, producing a number of functional food lines and we're fortunate enough in the past year to get involved with uh, a company Zenbev, uh, uh, Dr. Craig Hudson and his wife Susan. And uh, their product is a classic example of functional food. So uh, we've been working in conjunction with them to co-pack their product for them. It's a great product, it's been selling really well. Uh, we've, uh, as a result, we have had to hire th three additional people in the past six months, uh, as well as uh, actually it makes it four new hires in the past year or two. So uh, we're just delighted to be able to uh, have the opportunity to work with uh, Zenbev and, uh, and uh, also very uh, fortunate to have uh, the type of people that we can hire from the municipality of Huron. My name is Craig Hudson, I'm a psychiatrist. I developed a Zenbev with my wife, Susan. It's a high source of tryptophan. The pumpkin seeds from southwestern Ontario are the highest natural source of tryptophan, which allows us to get this into the brain. In high ambient light conditions, it becomes serotonin. In low light conditions, it becomes melatonin and helps with sleep. So it's a product that assists in a natural way, inducing a natural sleep. It's patented, published clinical trials. The interesting thing is in this little town of Seaforth, we actually sell this worldwide. Uh, we sell it in Germany, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Belgium, United Kingdom, United States. And it's the staff here, the hardworking staff in Huron County, that have really made that a possibility for us. We're very grateful for the staff that we have, and we're very grateful to work with Everspring's, which has been a really uh, neat opportunity to work closely with such a high-level manufacturer. Hi, I'm Paul Schuster from the Henslow District Co-op. Thank you very much for the nomination of Employer of the Year Award. Uh, it's a great honor for us to be nominated. We have over 400 jobs through about 15 locations in southwestern Ontario, so it means a lot for us to be nominated for this award. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for the nomination for Employer of the Year. Uh, I'm Philip Ashwin, Vice President of Sunnor Systems. Uh, we're a company located in Seaforth and we work mostly on barn ventilation for agricultural facilities. Uh, we employ 35 people here and uh, that has increased uh, steadily over the last 10 or so years. Um, I would say that's uh, 
one of the main reasons we are nominated for the award and a progressive company in that field. Hi, my name is Andy DeBoer. I'm Vice, Vice President here at Cyfilco Limited. First of all, I want to thank the HMA for the award for Employer of the Year Award. Uh, we really appreciate that and consider it an honour. Uh, we've been in business since 1979, so that's over 34 years. We have approximately 30 employees and uh, we're an industrial knitting operation. We manufacture products such as drainage filter, hay bale netting, bird netting and shade fabrics, just to name a and name a few. So anyway, thank you very much and we appreciate it. And the winner of the Employer of the Year Award is Sun North Systems. Hey, it's Health and Safety, Health and Safety Award. <laughs> we'll be awarded to a Huron County manufacturer who has achieved excellent, uh, excellent results in health and safety, reducing occupational hazards and disease and or developing innovative health and safety policies. And the nominees are Uh, my name is Mike Million. I look after safety, compliance, and training for the commercial trucking fleet at the Hensel District Cooperative. Uh, I want to thank the Huron Manufacturers Association for the nomination for uh, the Health and Safety Award for the Hensel Co-op. Uh, we're extremely proud of our workforce here and uh, my area of expertise is drivers. Uh, and a couple of the things I guess I'd say we do that uh, I'm proud of is uh, we enter our drivers every year in the Infrastructure Health and Safety Association Safe Driving Award Recognition Pin Program where the drivers are presented with uh, pins representing the amount of safe years they've drove uh, for the company and that's given to them at our annual fleet-wide safety meeting every fall. Uh, and we also have a, a fuel economy and safety incentive bonus program that we've implemented over the last year. Uh, that we are able to utilize through our um, tracking systems that we have set up in our trucks that monitor the uh, the the braking, harsh braking, speed, and idling times of the trucks, and uh, we award the drivers who achieve the results that uh, we would like them to by uh, giving them a cash incentive bonus uh, every quarter. So uh, those are a few of the things we do, and a few of the things we're proud of, and of course we're proud of our employees because none of this would be possible if it wasn't for the hard work and dedication of our employees always putting safety and, and health first. So thanks again for the, uh, the nomination on behalf of the Hensel District Cooperative. Hello, my name is Gerhard Metzger. Thank you for nominating us for the Health and Safety Award from the Huron Manufacturing Association. And uh, we spent a lot of time and effort over the last uh, few years or last decade uh, to implement uh, things like ergonomic workstations, uh, employee safety training, GMP training, and uh, health and safety and food safety goes hand in hand. And, uh, we, and it kind of shows uh, from us being without less time for the last 10 years. Thank you. Okay, and the winner of Health and Safety Award is Hensel District Co-op. Uh, I should have 
should have made Mike come, who gave the nice meeting. He's a little more long-winded than I am. Uh, this is a great honor for us. Um, I'm new to the Hensel Co-op, and, and it's amazing for me to see uh, the company as a whole. We, we are a farmer-owned company, and, and the community is something that is incredibly important to us. So on behalf of uh, our board of directors, our CEO, uh, the farmers that own us, uh, we thank you for this honor. We thank the HMA for uh, holding this event. Um, our workers are, are obviously our, our greatest asset, and looking after them is uh, the most important thing we can do. And, and we believe in what's called a internal responsibility system, where, where everybody plays a part in this. So I accept this award on behalf of all of our workers who play that part. Thank you very much. Exporting award. I got it, okay. Exporting award will be awarded to the Huron County manufacturer who has achieved exporting success with improved sales figure, figures outside Canada, um, accessing new markets and or taking more market share. And the nominees are. Hi, I'm Paul Schuster from the Hensel District Co-op. Thank you very much for the nomination for the Exporting of the Year or Exporter of the Year Award. Uh, currently we are exporting to 25 different companies uh, all across the world, so we're very happy to be nominated for this award. Thank you and have a good night. Okay, uh, I am, uh, my name is Frank Palin. Um, I'm the uh, Purchasing and uh, Special Projects Manager for Ken Pell Farm Products. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be nominated this year for the uh, Exporter Award. Um, we, uh, as a matter of fact, we just today shipped uh, a load to Vietnam. So it's, it's, a, it's a interesting business learning all the rules and regulations, especially when you're a food or feed additive product, all the restrictions and everything we got to go through uh, to make sure that this product is accepted into the uh, into the country that it is intended for. Um, we are HACCP uh, certified, uh, the first one in North America uh, to do with the premix end of the deal, and we are the second one in Canada to get our international HACCP. And we just got that uh, last year, or actually this year in February. So we're we're very product oriented, safety oriented, and um, I guess I don't know what else to say. That's that's what we do, and 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 we do that the best that we can. Um, dealing with a feed product, we have to do a lot different than if you're dealing with nuts and bolts. So we got to get approval uh, from the uh, not only the customs people but as well the the uh, CFIA, which is a Canadian Feed Inspection Agency, and as well as the USDA and stuff like that. We're in the middle of uh, working with the USDA on a product we want to ship to the United States right now. So I'm just uh, we did, Ken Pell is an organization. Uh, we started 30 years ago, and we're just pleased that uh, that we were nominated for this this individual award. Hello everybody, I'm Philip Ashwin, Vice President of Sunnor Systems. I'd like to thank you for the nomination of Exporter. Uh, as a company in southwestern Ontario, we have exported for over 20 years into not only the USA, but also Europe and Asia. Uh, in the last five, six years, we've really seen improvements in the European markets and we've made significant efforts and inroads into the Asian markets in the last two years to 18 months. Okay, and the winner of the Exporter Award is Sun North Systems.
probably can't get away with it twice. <laughs> um, thanks to the nomination committee for considering us and uh, everybody else who's involved tonight. I, I think it's uh, a great honor to be awarded uh, not only this one, but also the other award we received this evening. Um, I, I think it speaks from the employees. Uh, that's, that's what makes a company. You have to look after them, and from that grows your business. So in reality, this really goes back to the employees, uh, allowing us to make the efforts, especially in the export markets, because it takes a lot of time and effort uh, to succeed in those markets. So thanks to the employees. Okay, next we have Outstanding Tech Teacher. And this is selected from among Huron County Tech Teachers. And this video that you see is not only a list of the nominee, but it's also an announcement of the award winner. So, roll tape. Hi, my name is Jason Steinman. I'm very honored to be nominated for the Tech Teacher of the Year Award. I work here at, in the Tech Department at St. Anne's Catholic Secondary School, uh, where we offer uh, several different uh, tech programs to help the students uh, develop the skills they need to work in the industries here in our county. Uh, specifically, I work in the Agriculture Specialist High Skills Major Program, where we allow the students to focus in their grade 11 and 12 years specifically on agriculture and equipment repair and um, through co-op programs and our programs here in the shop we uh, try to give these students the opportunities and the skills to be successful uh, when they transition to the next step. I'd like to thank the Here and Manufacturers Association for nominating me for this award. Let's hear it for Jason. I don't even have to open it. I know it. By popular nomination, Jason wins the award. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I really do think that our young people are our greatest resource. And um, to have the opportunity to help guide them and, and hopefully introduce them to the opportunities that they have right here at Huron County is a real blessing, and uh, this is a true honor. Thank you very much. Now Outstanding Associate Member Award. We found an Outstanding Associate Member in the last 10 minutes, and we can give it away. No, I'm just trying to cover my, I couldn't do it. Okay, will be awarded to an Associate Member of the Huron Manufacturing Association Association who showed substantial involvement with the HMA and has assisted in promoting the goals of the HMA for strong manufacturing sector in Huron County. And the nominees are Uh, we'd like to thank the HMA for the nomination of uh, the Benastra BRE uh, Task Force. Uh, what the Benastra BRE stands for is uh, Business Retention and Expansion, and it usually um, picks out communities that need some work. And that's what the task force here, and among some others, have done over 2012 and 2013. Uh, Diane? The purpose of the tax force was to bring Venastra back up into the standards where it should be situated within the township. After the amalgamation, Venastra sort of got to the back of the corner. Through the BRE, we were able to build up the people's attitudes towards Venastra. We were able to encourage people to put praise forth Venastra. Our businesses have taken a complete hold where they are now working together. We are doing everything we can to improve our community. 
the people in the community now see a light at the end of the tunnel, that they have the task force here that is working to help them and to build up what is really theirs. We want to prove to people that this is a community that is worth working and living in and it will bring everybody much more together and we have the BRNE to thank that brought us to the point where we are right now. I would like to say that the BRNE is still a sense of pride and the residents of Anastra as well as the industrial park uh, portion of uh, the village of Anastra. Uh, it actually helped us identify its glorious past. The military occupation was a wonderful thing for Vanastra. It actually has given us a very exceptional infrastructure to do business, proper zoning, and very wonderful wartime built homes. Um, it's been a good place to do business. There's a strong sense of community. People are working together to improve the environment for business. We have our business in Vanastra. We're proud to be in Vanastra. It's been a very wonderful opportunity, and we're the envy of any community in Huron County as far as having industrial land to expand. Huron County, Vanastra is the place to do business. Through the BRNE, Vanastra has been rebranded and can actually get rid of some of the stereotypes that it once had. And since we've started, we've just been able to scratch the surface of some of the issues that, that plagued uh, the community. And in the short time that we've started, We've actually accomplished uh, a lot by cleaning up the, the community and actually identifying the problem areas and getting everyone on board, business and in, uh, residential individuals. There's no limit to what we can actually accomplish in the near future because in Benastra we're only going to go up. Hi, I'm Michael Nephew. I'm Regional Manager and Team Leader for the Commercial and Ag Account Management Team at United Communities Credit Union. On behalf of our board and our staff, I would like to thank the HMA for recognizing our role in the communities through strategic partnerships like the one we form with HMA. Investing in the community is part of what we are and we take great pride in that. Organizations like HMA are building sustainable communities and we are pleased to be able to support that. We look forward to continuing these partnerships as our credit union grows and to helping our members achieve financial success. So thank you again and best of luck to all the nominees. And the winner for Outstanding Associate Member, United Communities Credit Union. I'd, I'd like to thank uh, Huron Manufacturers uh, Association for this award and recognizing our work with the association. It's a great honor. Um, I'd like to uh, comment on one of Dale's uh, comments that there's a great story to tell here in Huron County and we, uh, we would really like to help you uh, tell that story. And I accept this award on behalf of the staff like many companies, it really is what makes a company. And I'm really proud of our staff. And I'd like to personally thank them and ask that they join in in the picture at the end. Maybe we can do it at the end of the uh, ceremony. Uh, thanks very much. Okay. I couldn't get out of this one. <clears throat> uh, Every year, it's the chair's uh, honor to uh, take a look at what we have in our area uh, here in county and see and present a leadership award. Um, last year, I was pleasured. Well, actually, I've been doing it now. This will be my fourth time, but still, I'll, uh, it's amazing when you have to try and figure out who gives the most and you find some of these people that you never even heard of uh, actually I, I hate like heck to admit it you didn't even know their business existed you know so it's 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 outstanding to see how many different types of entrepreneurs volunteers that we have out there <clears throat> this year 
It's my pleasure to present, I have to read people, I'm sorry, I, I don't memorize. It's my pleasure to present this year's Chairman's Award for Leadership to Steve Haberer, I believe, a local businessman from Zurich. It's, uh, like I said, it's amazing what you can find when you go searching for someone who's showing the way in the community. Because I really don't know a lot of the volunteers uh, in, in uh, Huron County uh, and, and what they do, I have to rely on others to share the knowledge and share who is actually doing what. Uh, this year I, I received several suggestions and had to choose and it was very difficult this year. However, uh, Steve is the present owner and president of, uh, I hope I'm doing this right, Haber Concrete and they're located in Zurich. The business was started in 1957 by Steve's father Fred and his brother-in-law as a burial vault company. Uh, for those who are not aware of what a burial vault is, I hope you have to wait a long time to find out. <laughs> However, uh, if you must know, I was able to glean information that stated these vaults were created to prevent the burial graves from collapsing after time. Uh, I'm sure that Fred will let me know if I'm wrong, but their company is very innovative in producing products for their industry and have a network of over 50 funeral homes who market their products. Apparently, they are the largest producer of these products outside of the GTA. Wow, and in our own backyard. You know, that's, like I said, you, when you look, you can find something out. Uh, <clears throat> my wife and I have to rethink where I'm going to be married. Uh, I guess the backyard and the garden where I could be of some benefit might not be the thing to do now that she knows about this. He is married to his wife, Michelle, and has four children, Lindsay, Nick, Lauren, and Kelsey, and is a local yoko who attended Zurich Public School, South Huron High School, then on to University of Western Ontario to further his education. Apparently, uh, now Nick uh, joined the business, and according to various spies I have recruited, is presently grooming Steve for retirement. Steve uh, is currently president of the local Zurich Chamber of Commerce, and has been instrumental in the revival of this organization, which had become dormant. If that was not enough, he's currently chair of the Zurich and Area Health Association, which was instrumental in finding a site and fundraising for the Blue Water Area Family Health Team, of which, you know, just to show that he's currently chair of. And other areas of involvement include, uh, he's the past chair of the Blue Water Community Development Foundation, which uh, apparently has fundraised over $500,000 for the Zurich Community Center. He has uh, been a member of the Zurich and Hensel Business Retention and Expansion Working Group. And uh, he is now presently serving on a community project to develop a walking heritage trail. So like they say, the busy get busier. Um, and I'm sure there's other areas that he has his fingers in, but I, I don't have enough paper here, so. Their company is very community ori orientated and encourages their staff to be active in their communities and other financial support to and offer financial support to, to causes of local interest. Their favorite benefit of over 20 years has been, of course, the Children's Hospital of Western Ontario, one of my favorites. Uh, before tonight, I had never met Steve, but I wish I, I had of years ago. I could have gotten him to do other projects for us. Also, it seems like his greatest mentor was his father, Fred, an entrepreneur who was also involved in and committed to his community. I have been told that Steve is a history buff and, according to Mark, claims to possess volumes of useless knowledge. Okay, and also, according to a friend of his, here's a few scenes uh, of the funeral industry is that people are dying to get into Steve's products. I didn't do these groaners, they were presented to me. Steve is the last guy to let you down. <laughs> and finally, he has survived over 50 years in business selling something no one wants to get into. <laughs> so, to our general membership, a, a reminder to nominate your peers and fellow business people, okay? Um, for these awards, uh, not only this one, but all the other ones, uh, there are so many people out there that are deserving of them that, you know, might slip under, we just don't know about them. So the HMA in Huron County is very proud of our businesses and you should be as well. So please, let's everyone give a hand to the HMA's 2013 Chairman's Leadership Award to a very deserving person, Mr. Steve Hubber.
not chant. Now, now I'm confused. Are you Ken or Frank? <laughs> Just ask Nina. Nina. <laughs> well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate all the nominees and, uh, and the winners for the various uh, uh, categories. Um, this, is, this is very humbling. I didn't know anything about this till very recently, but... Uh, um, I'd like to thank the, the uh, Huron Manufacturers Association for their leadership award. I'd also like to say thanks to Mark Cassidy, our economic development coordinator in Blue Water, uh, for nominating me. It's especially gratifying that a tiny business in a tiny town caught the attention of the HMA Hubbard Concrete Products, some of this Ken's already filled you in on, uh, began in the burial vault business in, oh, Frank. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> there we go. There we go. Frank. In 1957, so we're not really a startup. And we've been, he stole some of my, my humor too. He, he, uh, he said uh, something that I'm going to say now too. We've been letting people down ever since. <laughs> and like Frank, you may not have heard of us, but I guarantee that you've seen our little white trucks with big concrete boxes on the back many times. None of us involved in community work or volunteering do so to receive any special accolades. But I must say that it's very nice when they are received. I do what I'm able to do in the, in the Zurich slash Blue Water uh, community in terms of involvement, community involvement, because I want to help make my community the best that it can be. Not the best place ever, but the best that it can be. Years ago when our kids were very young, one evening, one of them asked me where I was going, and, and I told them, I said, well, I'm off to a meeting of one kind or another. I carefully explained to them how important it is that when you grow up, you have to do things to make the town you live in better. I was told the same thing. So after a short pause, they agreed. You're like the king of Zurich. Before tonight, that was the closest thing to a tribute I've, I've received. And just like this award, it will remain special. When surrounded by good people, chairing a committee or a board is really pretty easy. So is initiating an idea or launching a plan which might benefit the community you live in. It takes dozens of people, people that aren't here with us tonight, to do the real work in achieving a, a goal for a community. So I will be sharing this award with all of them. Thank you. We are now at the final award of the evening. And Wes has abandoned me on the stage. <laughs> Thank you, Wes. Um, we are at the final award of the evening, which is the big award. It's, it's, it's the Emmy or the Grammy award so to speak. And this is the HMA Manufacturer of the Year Award. And the selection committee uh, looks at all of, the, all of the nominations for that have been submitted and from those selects the uh, Manufacturer of the Year Award. So we do have that here this evening in the envelope. So I'm going to let Frank open it. Right. You want me to do it? Okay. Of here we go. You're much better looking. People will pay okay. attention when you're open. Go. And the 2013 HMA Manufacturer of the Year Award goes to Sun North Systems Limited.
Well, that's a surprise. Um, we came here this evening just expecting a very good meal. We received that. Um, then I end up on stage three times. <laughs> Certainly wasn't expecting this. Um, especially like to thank HMA for all their hard work that they do year round. Um, I know we all appreciate it. Um, I'm sure this is probably the only time they ever get told that is at this meeting. Um, but uh, I think I'd like to take this opportunity myself to thank them, but I, I'm sure everybody else here would too. So I think that's worth it. Um, I don't know what else to say. Um, we really appreciate it, and uh, it's great. And uh, that's, that's all I have to say, I guess. Thank you. Okay, uh, that's pretty well it for this evening. Uh, we have a, a couple of door prizes to draw for. John Kaiser will try and do it honestly. Um, and yeah, right. Okay, uh, the, it's, it's a, for a variety of uh, locally manufactured food products and items from Hakey's Aders Turkeys. And the winner, or the draw winner, is Barry Smith from Smith Welding. Okay, um, that's it. Uh, oh, is there one more door prize? Oh, is there? Cool. So this is the United Communities Credit Union. Okay. United Communities Credit Union, that's what he got. God, I'm as bad as Wes. <laughs> and now we have the products. For the oh, okay. Now, now, the now we have the food products. Oh, Frank Palin. <laughs> no, that's not it. Oh, Jesus. John Kaiser. <laughs> Okay, uh, after all those faux pas of myself, uh, I wish to thank everybody for coming and remember next year to nominate somebody that you feel is deserving for these awards. And the people that are nominated, accept the honor. Okay, don't bow out, just accept it and be thankful that you're well thought of. Um, also, remember to take the little gifts on the table. Now you don't, f no fights, no fights. Uh, you're allowed one a person, and I'll bet you the women win. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, and we're very pleased you came. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, I'm sorry, I forgot to thank Wes. <laughs> uh, Wes is as as provide us with a little bit of humor tonight and, and some good leadership. So we wish to thank you and we'll see you all in 2014.